Assembly of your new AT Gold is very simple. First, select the upper and lower stem assembly. Holding it in front of you, select the lower cam lock, the one closest to the stem assembly. Twist the lower cam lock clockwise to loosen it. Then, loosen the upper cam lock by twisting it counterclockwise. Depress the spring clips to extend the shaft. Next, press the two mounting washers firmly into place in the openings at the base of the lower stem. Slide the search coil onto the stem and insert the threaded bolt through the holes on the lower stem and search coil. Hand tighten the search coil assembly with the wing nut. Loosen and remove the upper cam lock collar. Slide it over the S-stem spring clips. Next, depress the spring clip in the S-stem and insert the control housing's S-stem through the upper cam lock into the upper stem. It is important to engage the spring clip into the first stem opening in order to maintain battery compartment access. Hand tighten the cam lock collar being careful not to over tighten. Depress the spring clip in the lower stem and adjust to the most comfortable operating length. Then hand tighten the lower stem cam lock collar. Wrap the cable snugly around the stem with the first turn of the cable going over the stem. Insert the search coil connector into the four pin connector on the left side of the control housing. Notice the pin orientation of the connector before attempting to insert it. It's important to fully insert the connector to ensure proper connecting and sealing. Then thread the collar into place until it is hand tight. If the o-ring is properly seated, the connector's collar can be easily tightened. If this collar is difficult to turn, the o-ring has not seated properly. The AT Gold's headphones connect on the right side of the control housing. Notice that this is a two-pin connector which also must be aligned properly. Again, push the connector fully into place before tightening the collar. Secure the headphone cable under the arm cuff by pressing it into the headphone cable clip. To power on the AT Gold, press the power button in the bottom left corner. To turn off the detector, press and hold this button for one second until the detector makes a second beep. When you have changed detector settings and wish to restore the AT Gold to its factory settings, press and hold the power button for five seconds, waiting until the detector produces a fast double beep. All metal items encountered by the AT Gold are referred to as targets. Garrett's exclusive Target ID technology provides two indicator scales to help identify targets. The lower scale is the AT Gold's discrimination pattern setting. These dark segments on the lower scale indicate what targets your detector will sound on. And, when it sounds, a single segment will appear on this upper scale to show what you have found. The Target ID legend just above will then help you to identify the target. Ferrous, or iron, targets will indicate on the left side. Non-ferrous targets that are thin or that have low conductivity will indicate in the middle. Thick or high conductivity targets, such as thick silver, will indicate toward the right. There are 20 upper scale graphic segments for target ID. When the AT Gold is switched into its Discrim 2 mode, notice that some of the lower scale segments disappear. The AT Gold will now only sound on targets represented by the remaining segments. But you will still see a target ID cursor for every metallic target you find, including your discriminated targets. The AT Gold's digital target ID system also provides a specific target value to help identify targets more precisely. Targets are identified on the LCD by number, 
with items with lower numbers being the most ferrous. The most conductive targets, such as thick silver, register toward the high end of the scale. The digital target ID is a more precise version of the target ID cursor seen in the upper scale. Notice as I pass this gold nugget in front of the search coil. The digital target ID for this nugget reads between 51 and 53. Each target ID cursor above it has a width of five digital points. So you notice that the target ID cursor is under the number 50 when the digital target ID reads 51 or 53. This system, used in conjunction with the audio target signals, provides you with more information. It is important to understand that the AT Gold's detection depth can exceed target ID depth. In other words, you will sometimes hear faint, deeper targets that do not provide any target ID. Target values can vary based upon the orientation of the target in the ground, the amount of ground mineralization, and other factors. It is important to practice in the field to learn how these factors affect target ID. This depth scale will indicate how deeply you'll have to dig to recover any coin size target that you find. Your AT Gold has eight settings for sensitivity. Use higher sensitivity settings for very small or very deep targets. Use lower sensitivity levels in locations where the detector is behaving erratically. Several factors can cause your detector to appear to behave erratically outside electrical interference, highly mineralized soil, excessive metallic trash, or the presence of other metal detectors. Often these interferences can be resolved with proper ground balance, discrimination, or by changing frequencies without having to reduce sensitivity. The AT Gold is capable of operating at four slightly different frequencies in order to minimize the interference from electrical sources, such as power lines, or from other metal detectors. Sometimes if you're hunting in a gold patch, you may want to get in real close proximity to one of your other hunting buddies. With some machines, you're not able to do that real well because of electrical interference or interference from another machine. But with the AT Gold, you can overcome that with the frequency adjust. In this case, we're getting a lot of feedback from each other. I simply hit the frequency button and find a frequency where it calms down. There's four adjustable frequencies to select from. And now we're able to hunt in close proximity.